Hello and welcome to my guide for fast and efficient hunter rumors. This guide will focus on master rumors, but I will include a tip that can be used if you have access to at least adept rumors. This guide will cover what a block list is, how to set it up, as well as the most efficient blocks for running master contracts, ideal inventory setups both for pre and post block list, the most efficient ways to complete each of the master rumors. Hunter rumor blocking is not as transparent or convenient as Slayer, but I will do my best to make it as simple to understand as possible. Before getting started, I recommend enabling back-to-back -back rumors by going to Rumor Settings with Guild Scribe Verity and disabling it after you get assigned your first rumor if it isn't a rumor that you want to block. Each Guild Hunter can provide you with a unique long-term rumor. Long-term rumors cannot be assigned by any other Guild Hunter until you complete the assignment. What is a long-term rumor? To put it simply, Every rumor after your first with the same guild hunter is a long-term rumor. Let's say you want to block everyone's least favorite rumor, pyre foxes. As cute as they look, they are a horrible rumor. They take a long time on average to complete, give very little experience, and no drops. First, you'll want to pick up a rumor from one of the two adept hunters, Servus or Ornus. It doesn't matter what the rumor is for your first rumor, as it is not a long-term one and will not count as a block. If it is not Pyre Foxes, disable back-to-back -back rumors for a chance to get them on your next rumor. Complete the rumor, and then get another rumor from the same hunter to start rolling for the long-term ones. Continue completing rumors until you get assigned Pyre Foxes. Congratulations, Pyre Foxes will no longer be assigned to you by any other hunter, as long as you never complete this one. It is possible to chain long-term rumors, although it is entirely dependent on luck. Let's say you just got assigned Pyre Foxes as a long-term rumor from service. Great, no more fuzzballs. You then move to block red salamanders or sunlight antelopes from the expert hunters, and as luck would have it, Guild Hunter Teco assigns you red salamanders. Congratulations, it is also blocked and you can move on. Even if you get a rumor you don't want blocked, I recommend grabbing a rumor from the other expert hunter, and then the novice hunter, before completing any further rumors, since each hunter will provide you with their own long-term rumor, and you might end up getting more blocks you want, making the process of completing the block list easier. To put it another way, the first rumor in a chain is not a long-term block. The second and on in the chain is a long-term block. If you do a novice rumor, complete it, and talk to the novice hunter again, it will be a long-term rumor and count as a block. If you complete a novice rumor and talk to an adept, expert, or master hunter without obtaining a second novice rumor, they will not be considered long-term rumors and do not count as a block. At any point, you can confirm your long-term rumors. After obtaining a rumor from one hunter, go to a different hunter and ask about rumors. They will ask if you want to hunt for them instead, and there is no harm in accepting this, as it will not reset any of your progress. If they use the past tense to say, I asked you to hunt blank, then it is considered long term, and as long as you don't complete that rumor, it is considered blocked. Be careful when talking with a novice hunter, as you have an additional dialogue to reset all current long term rumors. Do not select his second option for a brand new one. You are always free to swap between the hunters, and after checking, you can just go right back to your master rumors. Okay, now that we've covered what a block list is and how to set it up, let's talk about what rumors are best to block for each master. For adept rumors, there's only one choice, pyre foxes, as they are the only rumor assigned by both adept and master hunters. For expert rumors, there are four remaining options, red salamanders, red chinchampas, dashing kebits, and sunlight antelopes. Dashing Kebits are one of the fastest rumors you can be assigned and will only be faster when Jagex adds a quick option to obtain a Falcon, so I highly recommend against blocking these. Out of the remaining three, Red Salamanders and Sunlight Antelopes are the obvious choices. Red Salamanders are slow experience, provide no drops, and are typically busy, which means world hopping. They also require a different inventory than the meta, along with their Teku counterparts. Sunlight Antelopes are slow experience and have a massive wander range and a long respawn that makes hunting them a miserable experience. Red Chins aren't always the fastest rumor, however, they are good experience, decent GP for mains, and useful to have on an iron, and they also give you a chance at a passive pet. The Novice Hunter can assign you any hunter creature, and it can be quite difficult to land on the one you want. For this reason, it is recommended to get this one passively off of chaining or wait until you have your other three blocks completed first. Of the five options with overlap on the master table, Teku Salamander is the best rumor to block, for the same reasons as the Red Salamander. If you get a different rumor that you do not want to complete, it might be faster to swap your novice rumor for a master one to re-roll the novice rumor. 
Doing this requires you to complete the Master Rumor, obtain and complete a Novice Rumor without accepting another Master Rumor, and then obtain a long-term Novice Rumor. For example, you are assigned Razorback Kebets, a tracking rumor that can take a long time to complete. Instead of completing this long-term rumor to obtain another, swap to a Master Rumor, complete it, and immediately obtain a Novice Rumor. If you have back-to-back -back rumors disabled, you will get a different rumor that could be easier to complete than the Razorback Kebet. Complete this rumor and get another from the Novice Hunter, which will be a long-term rumor that is hopefully either the Teku Salamander or another easy-to-complete rumor. Here is a bonus tip for those of you that aren't yet 91 Hunter but are maybe watching this guy just to learn about Hunter blocking. Some of the worst rumors that you can be assigned are Kebets. Most of them are deadfall, some are tracking, all are bad. Well, almost all of them. This is where falconry kebits can save the day. Using the same principles you just learned about blocking rumors, you can block slash store a falconry rumor with a novice or adept hunter for the times that you could assign one of the slower kebits. Let's say you get assigned sabertooth kebits from your expert hunter. Switch to your stored, spotted, dark, or dashing kebit rumor and go falconry hunting for the rare part. Go back to the hunter's guild and this part is super important. Do not turn in your stored falconry rumor. Instead, go back to the original hunter that gave you the Sabertooth Kebbits, switch back to that rumor, and turn it in. The reason that this works is that all Kebbits share the same rare part, unlike all of the rumor items. The reason that you would want to do this is that Falconry Kebbits are significantly faster to complete than Deadfall or Tracking Kebbits. Now that we have gone over the best rumors to block from each hunter, what kind of inventory setup should you have when both trying to set up the block list and the optimal inventory once you're all set up. When setting up the block list, you will get assigned all kinds of different hunter methods, all requiring specific hunter gear. For the cape slot, max cape is of course the best with access to the crafting guild bank, POH, and hunter guild all in one slot. Next best would be the hunter cape, followed by the construction cape, and finally your crafting or farming cape for close bank tallies. If you have none of those, then just rock whatever makes you fashionable. For armor, substitute guild hunter parts instead of graceful if you have them. The Ring of Endurance is only helpful for herbivore and not really required. However, the crab hook is absolutely mandatory if you want to flex on the plebs. The weapon slot is the new hunter spear, which can be made using teak logs, jaroba tails, and hunter spear tips. Jaroba tails can be obtained from vertail jarobas, which are caught with box traps, same as chinchampas, and hunter spear tips are found in almost every hunter rumor reward sack. This acts as an equipable teasing stick for pitfall hunts. Not listed is a blessing, and if you have a Rada's Blessing 3 or higher, it provides the Karen Woodland Teleport, which is close to a few Ruby Harvest Butterfly spawns, but Butterfly Rumors are typically skipped anyways. For the inventory, you will want a large meat sack if you are looking to bank the Dashing Kebet or Moonline Antelope meat, or if you just want to charge your whistle. The Huntsman Kit will store your box traps. At the time of recording, it is only useful for box traps, butterfly nets, and hunter spears, but in the future it should hold things like bird snares, new swans, and potentially more useful items that will cut down on bank visits. The Quetzalwitzel is useful for getting to Deku Salamanders, Sunlight Moths and Antelopes, Pyre Foxes, and Ember Tail Jarobas quickly, as well as a pre-99 hunter way of getting to the Hunter's Guild and a way to check your active hunter rumor. A knife is required for deadfall and pitfall traps, and it can be used in conjunction with a teak or mahogany log for tick manipulation while doing box traps. Bone Crusher or Bone Crusher Necklace is useful for automatically burying bones from deadfall, pitfall, and falconry, since these items go directly into your inventory otherwise. GP is needed for obtaining the falcon to hunt the falconry kebits. However, Jagex has suggested adding a perma payment option to the area which would eliminate the need to carry GP. The log basket is useful when doing deadfall or pitfall hunting, as it can be used to fill your inventory with up to 28 logs before you need to chop any trees. If you do need to chop trees, any tier of candor and headgear and an axe can give you two logs per standard tree provided you equip the headgear first. A tackle box can store small fishing nets, which can be added or removed to be used with the four rope and are required for salamander rumors. Finally, and completely optionally, a zero time scaling option. This can be alking or making headless or broad arrows since deadfall trapping provides you with a lot of downtime when you're standing around doing nothing, and it is also why we block the one deadfall trap that Master Hunters can assign. The equipment and inventory setup for post block list is similar to what has already been explained, but more streamlined as you know which rumors you can get. The equipment is identical to the pre-block setup I've just shown what should be prioritized if available. 
For the inventory, you could remove the zero time skilling as you don't get any time to do that except when running to your next rumor or doing herbivore rumors. The meat sack is still recommended as meat prices will likely stay high as they provide higher healing than manta rays or dark crabs, and it provides a one-click method of clearing up to 28 meat from your inventory before banking. Hunter rumors don't require a lot of gearing up and visits to the bank, but if you are interested in an example inventory setup tag tab, here is me gearing up and teleporting to the Hunter Guild to obtain a new rumor. As a tiny time saver, you can set your left click option to rumor, which will allow you to hand in your rumor with one click and accept a new rumor with a second click. Now that everything is set up with a block list and your inventory is looking clean and efficient, let's detail the most efficient ways to complete each of the master tier rumors. First up is red chins. There are three main locations for hunting them, but I will only go over the two best. First up is the Hunter Cape Teleport, which can be accessed five times a day. This puts you just northeast of the Red Chinchampa hunting ground, which requires the hard Western Provinces diary to access. You could hunt them at this teleport location, however it is more efficient to run to the hunting ground as there are 15 spawns and they are unable to wander too far from your traps. Set up your traps as shown for the best raids. However, this area can be shared by multiple people with only small differences in catch rates, as there are so many spawns. Once you use up all five of your Chin Teleports, the Hunter or Max Cape will provide you with a different dialogue option to get you to the Hunter's Guild. However, this takes the same amount of time, but instead of pressing 1 and 3, you press 1 twice. After you are out of Red Chin Teleport, your next best option is Prif. To get there quickly, use the Spirit Tree to Prif. Go north out of the gate. Just northeast of the gate, there are nine spawns of Chins. Four to the west of the rock, five to the east. Place your 3x3 of box traps on the marked tiles. This spot can be shared by two people, with the east location being the most optimal. Next, we will cover the Sunlight Moth. After receiving this rumor, teleport away from the guild and teleport back using the Quetzal Whistle. This will put you just north of their spawning location, which is just south of the Hunter's Guild, and it is faster than going up the stairs and out of the guild. Go to this marked location and start catching moths. I highly recommend tagging all the moths via rune light, and I prefer to set their color. It is important to discuss a useful plugin here, NPC Indicator. The most important setting to have enabled here would be Show Respawn Timer. The three tiles that I have marked are the respawn locations of the three closest moths. Each moth takes two ticks to catch and ten ticks to respawn. With one tick of travel time between the locations, there is only three ticks of downtime per catching cycle once you have identified the three moths that spawn here. Continue catching the same three moths to save run energy and maximize efficiency. Sunlight moths have a large enough number of spawns that this method is only barely better than aimlessly catching the moths. Dashing Kebbets are found east of the Piscatorius Hunter area. After receiving this rumor, teleport to a fairy ring and go to the Piscatorius Hunter area with the fairy code AKQ. Run east to the falconry area, Remove your spears and swaggy hook claw, which of course you brought with you, and then talk to Matthias to get a falcon and run to the eastern corner of the falconry area by the oak tree where there is a dashing kebit spawn. Don't attempt to catch more than one dashing kebit at a time, as their spawns are too far apart to be faster than hunting the same kebit and waiting for a respawn. I suggest changing the left click options on the dark and spotted kebit to walk here, and then tagging the dashing kebit and retrieve gear falcon, just to make things easier. For herbivore rumors, you will want to make your way to your closest bank. Pull out your graceful set, magic secateurs, herb sack, and a few stamina potions. Teleport to Fossil Island with your equipped dig site pendant. Run north to the mush tree and select option 4 for the mushroom meadow. This puts you just west of an herbivore start. If you don't already have it, I recommend installing the Herby AFK plugin which will make hunting herbivores super chill. Follow the arrows until you make it to an attack tunnel spot and then switch into your Huntsman outfit for an increased chance at the rare item. Both Moonlight Moths and Moonlight Antelopes are found in the basement of the Hunter's Guild, just south of the Guild Hunter's location. When assigned Moonlight Moths, run south to this location of the three marked tiles on the east side of the basement. 
these share all the same advice I covered in the Sunlight Moth section. As a bonus tip, since there are fewer spawns of the Moonlight Moths compared to the Sunlight, you might want to share the world with other hunters. There is no limit on how many people can catch the same moth as long as you are within one tick of each other, since it takes two ticks to catch a moth. Not everyone knows this, so you might want to let them know before they feel like you're crashing them. When assigned Moonlight Antelopes, run south to the pitfall location and grab three logs from the route located on the west of the area. The respawn time of the antelopes are faster than they were at release, however, they are about two seconds too long to accommodate two players at the same time, unfortunately, so it is advisable to find your own world. Tag an antelope, then set up the pitfall trap on the west side of the area. Jump the pitfall, then immediately jump back to the center of the hunting area. Tag another antelope, and then go back and loot and reset up the pitfall trap and repeat. After you use your final log, after jumping the pitfall trap, grab three more logs from the westernmost route and click to jump back before the animation of the antelope getting caught happens. If you are tick perfect, your character will jump back over the pitfall trap as the antelope is being caught. Repeat this process until you find your rare item. Thank you so much for watching my guide. I have left timestamps for each section in the description so you can easily find a specific part if you would like to rewatch anything. May you find yourself being followed by the coolest new bird in town, like my clan mate who pulled this bad boy while I was gathering clips for this guide. Until next time, have a good one.